Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. We thank you for the day. We thank you that there's no other foundation except you. And uh, Lord, we bring that uh, truth before you this morning as we talk or today as we talk about uh, various things and we just commit this time to you and we pray that you do it to our hearts. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right, let me just run through a couple of uh, quick things with you guys. I appreciate you being uh, here with us today. Uh, Brooks is also online with us. I'll get her, give her a chance to say hi in uh, just a few minutes here. Um, but I will run by, and, and uh, I'm sure Peter, I'm not sure about you, Roger, is familiar with my story a little bit. Uh, I, I had become pretty comfortable in, in building a church in middle-class America. Uh, did that for 10 years, and in, in the process, for myself, I probably lost some of the adventure of just following Jesus and kind of replaced it with the predictability of church traditions and systems a bit. And uh, But in the midst of that, uh, we received a prophetic word from somebody that we trust quite a bit, and it really kind of rocked our world. The, the word said, your feet are going to walk on many nations and all the continents. You'll plant churches and father them and nurture them like a Johnny Appleseed, dropping seeds and watering them. Well, that didn't fit into our paradigm at the time. We had started one uh, you know, good-sized church, and it had been a lot of work, and I couldn't imagine what it might look like to uh, see churches planted like dropping seeds that are reproducing and, and you know, scattering in such a manner. And uh, so I really kind of thought, well, we, we're going to have to find a new prophet. That word didn't make sense, and we kind of packed that one away. But in a few years after that, God, in his mercy, turned our world upside down, me in particular, took me through a very personal kind of a painful train wreck in which he called me to let go of some of my pl blueprints on uh, how I was doing church life and uh, took me into some, some great missionary concepts uh, that you guys are probably pretty familiar with, like church planting movements, reproducible, simple house churches, disciple-making movements. And uh, I was really excited about that. We began to uh, play with it here at home, but I really didn't know where it would go from there. Uh, in time, we ended up uh, letting go of our, our pastoral position altogether. And within a year of that time, we were traveling into some of the more desperate parts of the world, first South America, then Asia, and then on into Africa. Um, I often uh, kid my wife, when we first started traveling, she was taken with some of the cultural uh, necessities, uh, the differences <laughs> in them. So she was quite taken in taking... Uh, pictures of, of different bathrooms, and uh, I've noticed in the last couple of years she stopped doing that, which I, I think that means we've acclimated to some of the cultural changes. Anyway, we, as we traveled into some of these areas, I, I was really pretty surprised to discover two things that was taking place in missions, and I had a pretty good background in missions. I was still shocked. And, and one is that we realized that really poverty is just simply not being addressed by simply handouts. You know, we give a lot of resources to a lot of people around the world, whether it's water, food. Uh, money, whatever it is, uh, but unless there's a, a, a change in mindset and a spiritual transformation, we really saw uh, how, how often uh, it, it, it doesn't really help uh, to try to help somebody without internal changes. Uh, I remember one woman uh, said to us that she, she just didn't believe it was possible that she would ever feed her children here on earth. Her hope was she'd be doing it in heaven, but she didn't see it as a possibility here on earth. And it was a, a mindset of victimization and hopelessness that was just so deep within her that she couldn't break out of it, even, even though there were a few resources within her grasp to make use of. But when she came to Christ, she began to discover a different worldview in which there was hope, in which she could partner together with God. And she began to use those resources that were available to her, the few little resources, and make something of them. And I'm happy today to say that today she is feeding her family. So we were well aware that there's a, a deep spiritual need at the root of, of poverty. But the second thing that, uh, that really kind of surprised us was that people in these spiritually hungry places that we were traveling, and they truly were spiritually hungry. I mean, in Africa and so many parts of the world, there's so much fear, there's so much oppression. Uh, uh, people are, are, are just suffering under so many bondages. And they're hungry. They're looking for answers. But even in those places, we saw so many people not being reached by the gospel. Uh, there are churches there, and the churches are often caught up in their own programs, just like at home. Um, and they're not actually reaching and discipling the harvest, at least not taking advantage of the opportunities. You can even go to cities and see big crusades that appear to reach many, but they're not actually giving people 
uh, the tools and ability to, to become disciples of Jesus Christ. And so there's no transformation happening uh, uh, to the extent of what it looks like. And so we saw this incredible spiritual hunger, and we saw that uh, a lot of what was happening wasn't meeting some of those needs. So as we began working in those places, we realized that in what God had done in our life, he had, he had kind of given us a key uh, in understanding some of the dynamics of church planting movement multiplications, disciple-making movements. So we, we began to train leaders and workers in some of these basic principles, helping them to kind of break out of, of some of their traditional way of doing church life and entering into uh, a simple uh, um, process of reproducing disciples, churches, and leaders within their regions. So one, one example, just one of several examples, Stephen was pastoring a church in the Congo, uh, and he himself, he had such a heart for God, his own life had been changed. He came from a background of, of violence, tribal violence, uh, having to run from uh, out of fear and hide uh, uh, during the war uh, during that time, and just a horrendous thing, Christ came into his life, and he had such a passion to reach his community, but in his traditional church, he, wasn't, he, he knew he wasn't taking uh, full advantage of the potential that he had. So he came to us for training. We worked with him uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, he completely transformed his ministry into one in which uh, that follows the principles of reproducing disciples in churches. By 2011, he had reported uh, 16 active church planters in nine different regions. Now, just two years before that, he had a church of a couple hundred people. But he really wanted to see an impact take place. So now two years later, 16 church planters, nine different regions. And within a year, all of those were multiplying disciples and churches. We're talking about uh, hundreds, dozens if not hundreds of churches, dozens if not hundreds of uh, baptisms. And that's the kind of thing that we're beginning to see as, as I would say, more or less the norm uh, when we see these leaders and teams properly trained. And it's the thing that really has us motivated uh, to move forward. Now, now Stephen, uh, just to bring it home, you know, you talk about these numbers of, you know, lots of churches, lots of disciples. It, it just comes down to real people. Uh, Stephen likes to share some of the testimonies that he comes across himself from his experience. A couple of blind women actually are leading a church in their own home. Uh, he's seen Muslims open up their houses to be places of worship where they're learning Jesus' word together. Uh, Widows and, and or women that have been abandoned by their husbands, finding hope through the gospel, and then inviting others into a relationship with Christ in their home, and then teaching them to go out and do the same. So we're, we're talking about real-life people here experiencing real transformation. So because these people are, are so effective, we're looking to see how to further uh, build on what's taking place here in Africa. And, and currently we have a number of, of key teams, uh, key core teams in uh, these five countries, in Kenya, no, I'm sorry, not Tanzania, but Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and in DR Congo are the areas that we have some key teams functioning. Uh, but each of those teams has new emerging teams, many of them that are, have the potential to have the same kind of impact that they've been having. And so we're just at a point right now where the opportunities to go forward are, are are really kind of exploding in, in front of us, and we're trying to figure out how we can best take advantage of what God is doing. We really are seeing what we consider to be kind of a window of opportunity right now as new regions are opening, new teams are looking for more training and more areas, and uh, looking to be uh, uh, effective because they've seen the results over there too. So to take advantage of this window of opportunity, we're, we're sharing in this way because we do need help. We need uh, help. We're asking for people to come alongside and consider sponsoring one of the new emerging teams to help launch them into the full capacity of what they can accomplish so that they can continue to reproduce not only churches and, and disciples, but also more teams like them. So our Create History focus is about uh, developing sponsors for new emerging teams. So the question is, what, what, what does a sponsor provide a new team? And, and really what we expect uh, will happen as we are able to come uh, alongside, as sponsors are able to uh, bring more resources and finances to a team, that we can really be a launch pad. A sponsor becomes a launch pad for a, a, a new emerging team. And that happens because we're able to uh, fully train the team. And it takes two or three levels of good training, two or three, uh, yeah, I guess, levels the best thing I can say, to move a, a person, first of all, into where they're beginning to function well, 
in uh, reaching disciples and, and building churches to where they're becoming trainers of church planters themselves and then to where they're actually facilitating a movement. And so there's a process of training uh, that we bring to these teams. Along with that is coaching. Uh, as we help them deal with the obstacles that come up, uh, the persecution that comes up. Now this training and coaching is not just from us. It does include um, our time and expense in, in getting there and providing some of this, but it also includes our key trainers that are now there in Africa. And uh, so we facilitate them moving around their transportation, their conference costs, so that they also can participate in training and coaching these new emerging teams because they're very, very good at it. A sponsor, by sponsoring a team, we can also provide for these guys better technology. It keeps them in communication with each other and with us, which is a tremendous help. Another key thing we're able to do for new emerging teams is to bring economic development for leaders. Uh, in all of our core key teams, we've been doing this. Uh, we, we are after sustainability for these teams. Um, and, and so we're not, no, nobody that we work with receives some kind of salary or stipend. Uh, but we do help them to improve their economic life. We invest in a business they're involved in or a farm that they're involved in to help raise the level of what they're already doing uh, so that they are able to fully support their own work. And we, we, uh, as we continue to do that for other emerging leaders, that allows them to develop sustainable uh, movements and ministries in their areas. And then finally, by sponsoring a team, we provide resources that help them actually in the work of the harvest. Uh, sometimes that means Bibles. Sometimes that means other materials that are needed for them to do that. So these five things over a period of about 12 to 18 months, we believe will provide, uh, well, we don't just believe we've been doing it, but this will increase our ability to provide launch pads for effective new emerging teams. Now, let me give you an example of a real-life team that right now is emerging. Emerging means it's, well, it's really brand new in some ways, uh, though the leader's been at it for a few months here. Um, and this is a team we'd like to see sponsored. This team we call Bujumbura Bahizi. Bujumbura is the city in Burundi that uh, their team is located. Bahizi is the name of the key leader. Now, Bahizi attended a one-day vision conference that we held there uh, in April 2011. And uh, a vision conference, we're, we're just simply taking a day to kind of expose leaders to some of the basic concepts that we work with and a vision for what can happen in their ministries. Excuse me, it's not at all what we would call a training. But Bahizi was there. I don't even remember meeting him that day. But he got enough concepts that he actually went out on his own and began organically reaching neighbors and acquaintances, discipling them and teaching them to begin discipling others. We did uh, hook him up. He got hooked up with one of our African uh, uh, leaders in that uh, nearby region who worked with him a bit. And then last April, he came with several of his key leaders. Uh, and they really, for the first time, got kind of level one training so that they could begin moving forward. But in the year that he's been doing this on his own, he's planted 11 house churches, and he's developed a team of leaders. So he's a, a perfect example of an emerging team. We believe he has tremendous potential. We believe he has the potential to, to be what Stephen was in his region, maybe more, maybe less. There's no guarantee with any team what they will do. But either way, it's an incredibly effective uh, kingdom investment, we believe. So speaking of investment, what does it cost? And, you know, we're really kind of working this as we go. We're trying to develop this as we go, what we think uh, it's going to, is going to work as we move forward. Uh, we're going to sort of test this out and see. But we believe about 150 to 200 a month for 12 to 18 months will really provide a solid la launch pad for an emerging team. Now, I know many people would say, wow, I, no way I could do that. And totally we understand that. So we're looking at some options here. One, of course, is some people may be able to do this on their own, and that's fine. That's great. Create a launch pad for a team. But I think many people uh, might look at uh, the reality that they would need help to really launch a team. And so we're suggesting uh, the use of crowdsourcing, which means involving your crowd, your gang, your tribe, and your friends with you. Now, what we're looking at is that we, we, we're set up to help help you do that. Assuming you want to launch a team and you want to involve your friends, we can help you do that. And we've done this in some other areas, so we're not, uh, this isn't completely new territory for us at all. It, it requires a little bit of tools that we can provide. So we'll help you develop a team here in your 
location that's going to help launch a team there in Africa. And we're going to do that by providing the tools you need to invite and involve your crowd or your gang or your tribe or your friends. We're going to provide information for you, personal website, easy response for people to get involved with you, and, and just outline a few simple steps. And really, you know, most people, I think, will be surprised that people we know or that we are associated with, they, they generally are, are, are quite open to being involved in something if we ourselves are passionate about it. And that's kind of their gauge. If we're excited about something, people are often excited to get involved with us. So we provide tools for crowdsourcing, assuming that's the way somebody would want to go. We set up your own personal website. And the picture you see on the right there is actually a personal website uh, uh, set up for that person who wants to launch a team. And he starts out at the top there describing why he's excited about seeing uh, churches started in Africa, why he's excited about church multiplication movements, uh, why he wants to be involved in it, and kind of inviting you to participate with him. And so it's an individualized website uh, that can be used to invite others to join in. And then we'll help give you tools for emails and social media, making it easy to invite others and to learn about uh, what this is about and the effectiveness of it. And then we give you uh, also tools to use with if, if you have groups that you gather with in person. And we can provide some tools to help you communicate with them uh, what you're excited about in terms of uh, launching a church planting movement team. And then we, re we make responding very, very easy. Uh, for example, on that personal website, it's very easy for somebody to say, yeah, I want to get involved. Um, and I can do it right here, right now, and sign up for it. So let me give you a quick example of what that might look like as an example. Uh, maybe somebody would say, yeah, I, I want to sponsor a team. I want to involve my friends. And so I'm going to decide I can contribute $50 a month myself. Now, maybe I can't do that. Maybe I can do 20 a month. Maybe I can do 100 a month. Whatever it is. The point is, is that I decide that, and then I use the crowdsourcing tools. Appleseed sets up my website for me. Appleseed provides me with email, social media, other information to use with my group, uh, whether they're, you know, whether email, social media, or whether a group in person. And then I use those tools to network with some simple steps to invite my friends to join me, and then together with my gang, we really can fully support one CPM team, and really I think see some great results. And that is the result a team is launched. And then, of course, you and your friends receive personal updates on the progress and activity of your team. Now, all of this, again, uh, we're talking about teams and churches and multiplication of disciples. But I do want to go back and, and, and just uh, repeat that uh, it really does come down to, to people's lives. We have the opportunity, because we travel, uh, to meet firsthand, of course, you know, people just like here, just like in your hometown. Uh, people that have lived their whole life in fear and they're set free. Uh, people who've had horrendous things done to them and they not only receive forgiveness but they forgive others and find a tremendous freedom come into their life. People who have given up on their own life finding hope uh, and that's the reality of, uh, of what comes out of this. So that's pretty much my deal guys. Um, I do want to suggest, uh, just to be clear, this just I think helps clarify what the options might be as you listen to all of this. Some of the options might be, I might say I want to sponsor a team, I can afford it, that would be great. Uh, another response might be, I want to sponsor a team and I want your help to involve others, that would be great. Like I said, we're set up to do that. Uh, of course the response uh, could be, no thanks, God's not nudging me in that direction. That's always great, we're not looking to uh, see something happen here that's outside of what God's wanting any of us to be participating in. Um, and then, of course, it's also possible to say, well, I, you know, I'm not so interested in, in all that you shared here, but I do want to contribute something. Let me be part of somebody else's effort on their team. And that, of course, is, is an option as well. So that pretty much covers uh, our, our time here. What I'm going to do, guys, is uh, I've actually had you muted. I'm going to unmute everybody. And... Uh, so we're getting the noise there a bit. Uh, yeah. Brooks, I don't know if you want to say hi real quick to these guys here from Australia and New Zealand, actually. We've got an international group going here. I'd love to say hi. Hi, Peter, and hi, Roger. It's really good to see you guys this afternoon. I wish I was computer savvy enough to be able to let you see me as well. <laughs> um, but maybe that's fun. But thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so... Uh, early in your day and uh, really appreciate your listening 
um, mm. to what Roger had to say, and I, I can't tell you how exciting it is to go out in the field, and I've been in home after home after home, a person who has given me their own personal test testimony, not through one of the, the leaders that we get to work with, but their own personal testimony about how someone came, shared the message of the good news and how their lives are radically different than they were six months ago or a year ago. Mm -hmm. And the harvest is ripe. We are so excited to have the opportunity to work with the men and women that God has uh, put in our path because they are passionate to share the good news and to find a way that the gospel will really spread like the fire that I believe Jesus has intended for this time and this season. So thanks for joining us this afternoon. I hope to get to know you guys a little bit better in the future. And it's just great to see you and connect with other believers. Thanks, Bricks. Yeah. Now, not to put you guys on the spot, you don't need to be feel like you're on the spot. In fact, uh, we said we keep it brief, and if you got to go, you got to go, and that's not a problem at all. Um, but in addition, or uh, as opposed to that, if either of you would like to ask a question or offer a comment, it's now your time. Or like I said, if you got to go, I don't want you to feel like you mm. you're on the spot here. It's nice to see mm. the faces, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've, got, I've got a few minutes, but can I just ask one question? Is it, is yeah, it absolutely. Andrew or Roger? It, it, it's actually Roger. Um, oh, okay. I mean, um, this, this is my son's account. I didn't know he'd actually used oh, uh, my okay. laptop for okay. some of his work oh, conferences. So I will try and set up my own um, <laughs> account with this and uh, yeah, get my name right. Uh, no, no, that, was, that surprised me as well, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. Um, and, um, yes, yeah, I've, I've not used it before. I think actually when you sign on, uh, Roger, there's probably a box where you could have changed it. And you probably just went right past it, uh, not realizing. Yeah, probably it. Did, yeah. I, I don't think you actually have to have an account. Isn't that way it worked for you, Peter? You just sort of pops up and and you can put your name uh, in. I've, well, actually, I've never changed it. This has just always been this way. So uh, okay. you're, probably, you're probably right, but I yeah. needed it. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have a look around <laughs> it then. Yeah, hopefully next time. Um, as for myself, um, I had mentioned this to our uh, our house church because I'm trying to encourage them to start looking outwards rather than just we as a group. Sure. And we're looking at, at ways we can um, actually start planting some new churches around the uh, western area of, of, of Sydney right. uh, on the lower mountain. So we've got kind of a geographical um, vision here with, yeah. with sort of um, Parramatta, the, the sort of next major huge suburb of Sydney. Yeah. Um, heading west, and we've all already connected in with a house group up uh, the middle of the Blue Mountains. Great. Um, and we'll probably meet with them, um, I guess, we're looking to do that maybe every two to three months. But for our own group, um, I'm trying to get them to think missionally, yeah. um, rather than, oh, we just meet on a Monday night and that's us. Uh, we've got to look outwards into the world, and I think this yeah. could be a really good opportunity. So I'm going to take this to our, our, um, our house church and um, suggest that uh, we can possibly look at doing this sure. because with about nine of us, um, 20 bucks a month would cover it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so I don't think it's too onerous at all for anybody. That would be great, Roger. Now, what I can offer on that, um, just a couple of things. If, if, if you'd like to get several of the group on their own meeting just like this one, we could do that as an example, kind of go through the same basic material. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You've got the, the, the video from the createhistory.org, very short video that explains just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, also, yeah. I actually am recording today's session, um, which isn't, isn't nearly as much fun as doing it live, but that would also be available uh, if that's of any mm -hmm. help. And then any other materials that uh, you know, we can provide in writing, just, just let me know. I'd be happy to, to do what we yes. can there. So that'd be great. Okay. Hmm. Any uh, other questions or thoughts to your guys' end? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is very exciting um, mm -hmm. what you're doing, and it's, you know, it's really, it's always interesting to see how, the, how things are developing there. Yeah. Um, I think what I'd like to do is to, I've actually got a, my home group meeting tonight, and I, I might just, because um, I haven't talked with us about them before, uh, to them before, but I, 
Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have a chat to them and just see what sort of feedback there is. Because um, yep. I really don't know what the individuals, uh, how they're involved in other things. Because, you know, sometimes there's, a, there's, a, there's always multiple um, things going on that, pe that other people are, are interested in. But Absolutely. for myself, um, yeah, I think um, I want to be involved some way. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly how that is, I'm not sure yet. Sure. The idea of the website, uh, personal website, sounds like a good, like a good one. Mm. Um, and that might be worth exploring. So, yeah, so it's just, just early days at the moment. Great, great. Mm. Well, as I said, I'm not trying to put either of you brothers on the spot. Um, <coughs> appreciate your, your input here. Um, certainly feel free to holler any time for, uh, like I said, any of the resources that we might have. Um, I'll follow up with you guys. Um, and or if you want to, uh, if if you prefer, you know, talking live, we can we can figure out a time that works from your place to ours again, and we can get on live mm -hmm. again as well. And um, so great, I appreciate it. Peter's been a mm -hmm. great ongoing relationship. We've known each other for a bit. Uh, Roger, just getting to know you a, a bit more recently, so I'm glad to have that uh, this personal mm -hmm. connection. And uh, yes. look forward yeah. to. Yes. Look forward to seeing what God will do here. Really, really appreciate it. So let me pray. When are you next going? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Say it again. When are you next going to uh, Africa? Oh yeah, or good when question. When are you next going to? End of September. Uh, when we go, we go for six to eight weeks at a time, and so our next trip is. Uh, yep. Boy, it's coming up here. Yeah, end of September. So uh, yes. we'll be, we'll be on the road again. But, uh, looking for appreciate. Mm -hmm. Appreciate prayers. There's always a lot uh, involved in terms of the logistics, the planning, connecting with the right people at the right places. Yeah. Uh, more opportunities than we have mm -hmm. time, and uh, so appreciate you guys' prayer around that. Mm -hmm. well, let me just pray real quickly okay. with you guys and let you guys sign mm -hmm. off. So thank you, Father, so much that uh, you have placed in uh, all of our hearts a, a desire to see your kingdom come, to see lives transformed by the power of the mm -hmm. gospel, uh, both here where each of us lives as well as... Uh, in the unreached parts of the world, God. And it's just a privilege that we get a partner with you in whatever way you call us to be involved. And we acknowledge from the get-go that it's all by your power, by your might. We bring nothing but, at best, loaves and fishes. But what you're able to do with those as we offer them to you is always incredibly powerful and wonderful. We just are so privileged to see you at work through us in a variety of in incredible ways. So I just thank you for my brothers today, for them taking the time. Ask that in, for, in all of us you lead and guide into the full purposes of what you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Again. It's very interesting. And, uh, like I said, uh, feel free to tap me if uh, questions, answers, comments, whatever you got. And we'll, we'll move mm. forward. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay. Bye-bye right. for now. Bye-bye.